Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Fleet carriers, the ever more popular, gigantic player-owned entity in the game, are still as popular as ever. I think when Frontier brought them in, they thought they'd be few and far between. But now, they're akin to lampposts on a busy high street. What we're going to do now is look at some of the pros and cons of owning a fleet carrier and break down some of the most popular questions people have asked me on the channel. Starting off, let's define what a fleet carrier actually is. Well, a fleet carrier is a huge fleet carrier. It's a mobile base, a mobile command center, somewhere where you can store your ships, somewhere where you can hand in bounties, should you have the right module. Akin, you can also have universal carter graphics on there. You can have other players dock their ships at your fleet carrier. You can also store modules. You can also store some commodities as well. It truly is that mobile base. Now, this might seem very appealing to some people. However, it's not all sunshine and daisies. And what do I mean by that? Well, they're expensive. They're hugely expensive. And when I say expensive, five billion credits to buy. Then you've got the upkeep. Then you've got the crew to pay. Then you've got to jump it around the galaxy using a material called tritium, which can be mined and can be bought. On top of this as well, you can make a little bit of money back, perhaps if you've got a commodity market installed, and perhaps if you've also got a bartender installed as well. But more about that a little bit later. The price tag is very steep, and they can only jump 500 light years. Currently, that's the distance they can do in game. And only 500 light years in one jump. You can't daisy chain those jumps or automate them. That's a bone of contention I've discussed in another video somewhere. You can purchase these in the main systems attached to the factions. This is in main populated space. So it's very important to note that you have to be in a specific system that has a fleet carrier dockyard that will allow you to purchase a fleet carrier. And once you've parted with your 5 billion credits and you've stored it up with all the services and modules that you want, then it won't get delivered directly to you where you are. You'll get a message in your inbox saying your fleet carrier has been delivered to a, and it'll be a nearby system where you can go dock with it and then get on your merry fleet carrier way. Now, as I've alluded to, buying the fleet carrier is one thing. There are going to be ongoing costs as well. And some of this can be as high as just over 20 million credits, like about 24, 25 million credits in total. And that's per week. So it doesn't become so much as a purchase of a fleet carrier. It's more a case of more akin to a lease, I would say, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, you'll instantly know the systems that you can buy a fleet carrier in because there'll be a whopping great big honking fleet carrier dock outside one of the main stations. And then once you go to the station, you can contact the vendor, the fleet carrier vendor from Brewer, who make the fleet carriers. Um, and they'll be able then to say, right, okay, there you go. You can have your fleet carrier. Give me all your money um, and get grinding for the rest of your natural in-game life to keep the thing running. Now, as I mentioned, there is an upkeep cost as well that's assigned to a fleet carrier. And this is collected every Thursday during the Thursday maintenance tick that we all know so well. Now, this toll or lease or rental payment or maintenance payment, call it what you will, comes out on the Thursday. And depending on how many services you have assigned to your fleet carrier, depends on how much you're going to be paying. Also, how many times you've jumped your fleet carrier will also have a direct impact on how much you're paying. So if you're jumping here, there and everywhere to Colonia, expect that hefty bill at the end of the week. Now, if you've gone absolutely fleet carrier crazy and you've added absolutely every service you possibly could do to your fleet carrier in the home system and then gone bouncing around, all is not lost because you can pause services 
Fleet carrier services can be paused if you're not using that particular service on a fleet carrier. For example, Vista Genomics, somewhere to put all your plant and wildlife samples. Ooh, I'm not doing any of that exploration or um, genomic exploration. I'll pause that. You can press pause and it reduces the cost of your weekly upkeep. But be careful, commanders. Don't remove it, because if you do remove it, what will happen then, and here's the big thing, it's gone. And then once it's gone, you have to go back to a fleet carrier home system. And it hasn't got to be the home system, any one of the fleet carrier home systems, to get it reinstalled. Now, these carrier purchase systems you can buy for your fleet carrier can only be added to your carrier in one of the fleet carrier home systems where you can purchase a fleet carrier. Players use services on board your fleet carrier. And if you do, you can, if they do, you can set a small surcharge to try and increase some of your profits. I'm not entirely sure that's gone exactly the way Frontier Development have wanted it to go by making small micro economies inside the game. For example, if you want low temperature diamonds, for whatever reason, and some were selling them, they can set a price, a premium price for that, if somebody really, really wants them. Especially with the Odyssey on foot materials that can be traded via the bartender. This could be quite useful if, for example, you're looking for settlement defense plans. You can go to a carrier that has said they've got them. Lo and behold, you can part with your cash, get those materials for that personal equipment engineering. Now, as we've mentioned, each fleet carrier has a bank account assigned to it. Now, when you start incurring costs on a weekly basis with all the modules and the jumping and the crew costs and God knows whatever else you've got assigned to your fleet carrier, that gets debited directly every Thursday out of your fleet carrier bank account, which you can deposit money into and withdraw from from the carrier management screen. If, however, your bank account for your fleet carrier reaches zero and that money is theoretically run out, the upkeep of your carrier will not be able to be paid and therefore your fleet carrier will enter into a period of decommissioning and it will be sold. Now, when it's sold, you'll get a full refund of the 5 billion credits that you've invested in your fleet carrier to buy the carrier in the first place, minus, minus the cost of the debt. And anything stored on the carrier will be delivered to a nearby station. And by that, I mean modules and ships, for example. Now, as I've mentioned, fleet carriers are behemoths in the game and the largest player entity module type ship thing you can possibly own because at the moment we can't own bases and we can't own stations so the fleet carrier is basically it they come with 16 pads eight large landing pads four medium four small thus making the magic number of 16. now for all you fleet carrier commanders who are worried about making this huge investment in an inside game entity like a fleet carrier don't worry because so far, fleet carriers, they're not pervious to any damage. They're not going to be attacked by Thargoids so far. They're not going to be attacked by pirates so far. Well, in fact, that's wrong because they will be attacked by pirates, but the fleet carrier will get its lasers out and absolutely vaporize them. You may see this if you spend an awful lot of time on a fleet carrier deck, looking out the windows, gazing at the starlight. You might see the lasers kick off because some pirate or NPC has got a little bit fruity. If indeed you want to get fruity with the fleet carrier yourself and attack a fleet carrier in your little Viper Mark III, then good luck to you because then you'll see the devastating power of these in-game ships. Now, should anyone be silly enough to attack your carrier, they'll get vaporized. And once they are vaporized, they'll be sent to a penal colony or prison ship that are dotted around the elite dangerous galaxy and then and here's the big point they're gonna have to pay a fine to get themselves out there as well now let's talk about jump range which is something that we touched on a little bit earlier on in this video jump range is currently limited to 500 light years in any one jump 
Now, you can jump 100, you can jump 200, you can jump 300, but a maximum of 500 light years. And there's no way to automate further jumps currently in game. Bit of a bone of contention this, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, once you've set a destination in your fleet carrier service menu, you then got approximately, and this is approximately because depending on how many people are doing fleet carrier jumps, does have a direct impact on how long jumps take to calculate. On average, it's 15 minutes per jump. If you're playing, say, on update day, and every man and his hound is on their fleet carrier, jumping them here, there, and everywhere, we have in the past seen times of up to 45 minutes of jumping. On top of that, then, before you can jump again, there's also a five minute cooldown process upon your destination arrival. And it doesn't stop there with your hands in your pockets. Don't think you're taking them out just too, just, just too early because keep your hands in your pockets because they'll be dishing out more credits because every time you jump, you get charged a wear and tear premium for additional maintenance. Now let's talk a little bit about navigation, for example. Yes, once you're on your fleet carrier, you can use any of the number of consoles that are dotted around the ship to plot a jump. And as we've said, 500 light years at the moment being a maximum, and you can't daisy chain your jumps either. However, you can send the fleet carrier remotely from the right hand panel and go into carrier management and then program a jump from wherever you are in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy and programming a destination for your fleet carrier. Particularly useful if you're at a particular site, for example, and you wanna bring your fleet carrier in with some additional ships and modules as well. Really good for combat zones, really good for Thargoid spire sites and all the stuff that's going on in the Thargoid war as well. So yes, you can indeed do remote navigation and remote jumps. You haven't necessarily gotta be on the fleet carrier, though it is quite spectacular being on the fleet carrier bridge and seeing a jump. So let's talk about fuel and fueling these jumps for your fleet carrier. Yes, to use a fleet carrier, it runs on something called tritium, which is a mineable fuel. You can mine tritium from any sort of like mining ring that has tritium in it, needless to say. But you can also buy tritium. This has led to some huge prices and overinflation of tritium, but has also led to quite some very kind commanders, should we say, to furnish fleet carriers with tritium if you're struggling. I know people in my community have been absolute diamond in supplying me with tritium as well. There have been community goals all about the tritium, and you've got to wonder, do you keep the tritium for yourself, stick it in your fleet carrier, or do you sell it and make that super duper extra fast cash? Now this brings me on to another thing about tritium. Now your tritium fuel tank for your fleet carrier can hold 1,000 tons of tritium in its fuel tank. Though in addition, you can store another 25,000 tons in the carrier's personal inventory space. But, and here's the big but, it's a big one as well. All the other stuff you've got in your carrier like you might have picked up low temperature diamonds, you might have picked up limpets, escape pods, all that sort of stuff, and you're storing those for a rainy day, also eats into that 25,000 tons of personal storage as well. So just something to be mindful about that as well. So let's talk about space. We've been talking about space. It's great. Your personal inventory space is accessible to you as the fleet carrier owner. And here you can store your commodities or tritium fuel and other things and modules and all that, like what we've said. And your ships, by default, can be stored on your carrier. Ships, by default, do not count against your personal storage space. Okay? Um, you access your personal storage space by the right panel. Um, you can access it there, um, you know, whilst you're docked at the carrier. You cannot remotely access your storage space because you're not there though, are you? In it. So, is the thing. Quite a few, and I'll say quite a few, limitations on the carrier and what you can do. Some things you can do when you're there, some things you can do when you're not. 
One thing I want to talk about really now, right, is the bartender and the bartender setup. Now, we have systems like Vista Genomics and Pioneer Stores and all that sort of stuff. The bar, the kind of 10 forward from Star Trek area, was brought in. And, you know, it looked to be quite, you know, cosmetic to start off with. You could sit on a bar stool and, and all the rest of it and everything was great. Then they bought in sort of like a bartender personal items trading, which was quite interesting. Now, people can sell to your bar bartender. People can buy from your bartender if you set up your bartender trade orders as well. It's also a way that if you don't set up a buy or sell order, you can store additional personal items outside of the capacity that you have in your personal inventory. So that's also very good as well. So it's worthwhile having a bartender. It's a nice place to be upon occasion, um, providing people aren't sort of like through the floors. Um, and it's also pretty good as well to sit there and gaze out the windows. Unfortunately, you cannot go witnessing carrier jumps from the bar because as soon as you get to the point where you have to um, go through a hyperspace jump, you're either transported to the command seat, if it's your fleet carrier, or you're transported to the observation lounge. So to see the stars roar by, in a 10 forward type manner is not going to be for you. So there you go. Loads of things that you need to know about fleet carriers before you buy them. Um, let me know if I've missed anything. I probably have. And perhaps I'll add an appendum to the video. I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. Check back for more videos on Elite Dangerous and other games in the series.